On this episode of Skeptico, a show about being human. Are you human? Hey, are you human or what? Human? I'd be human later. I think many, many years from now, humans are still going to care about other other humans. I, you know, I was reading the internet just a little bit, and everyone's like, "Oh, everyone's going to fall in love with ChatGPT now," and everybody's, you know, like, "Everyone's going to be the ChatGPT girlfriend, whatever, whatever." I bet not. I bet we're. I, I think we're so wired to care long term about other humans in all sorts of like big and small ways. So that last clip you heard was from uh, Sam Altman who is the CEO and one of the founders, along with Elon Musk, which a lot of people forget, of a company called OpenAI, which you probably have heard of, know about. It's the the ChatGPT people, but it's really much more than that. So let me get back to the human thing and that quote, because a couple months ago, Sam was fired from OpenAI, and there was a lot of speculation about why he was fired, But the best guess is probably because of this. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Rocky. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm awesome. Listen, I got some huge news. Oh, do tell. I'm all ears. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. (laughs) Kidding, of course. (laughs) That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? Well, it's for a software engineering role, but I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky, (laughs) you definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which could actually work in your favor. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Your enthusiasm is what's really going to shine through. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to throw this on. What do you think? Oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you, you'll definitely stand out, though maybe not in the way you're hoping for an interview. Okay, I got it. I got it. So what you just saw was a demo of what OpenAI released last week. Their chatbot kind of on steroids, next level, better than anyone else's. And it has this interaction part of it that you've seen on this show because we do it with Uh, in inflection and and pie all the time. But they've really taken it to another level. If you're watching the video on this, which most people don't watch the video, they listen just to the podcast. But if you do watch the video to this show, you have to see the expression of this uh, guy who's uh, interacting with the AI because he's an employee of OpenAI. So he's not unfamiliar with the technology. But the expression on his face as this interaction goes on is... Well, what we've all experienced with AI is you know it's not sentient. You know you're talking to a robot, but you can't help but become engaged. It taps into your humanity in some way you're not totally in control of. And that's kind of scary. And the scariness of AI is the reason that a lot of people think Sam Altman got fired. And when you see this demo, and you see where this technology is rapidly heading. And it's not just with interactions on your phone like this, but think robots, think battlefield, think geopolitics, think everything. You kind of want to make sure that you have control of the guy who's running that ship. And I'm not sure that they thought they really had control of Sam Altman. And based on the interview clip that I showed you, I'm not sure that they do have control of Sam Altman. But we'll see. Of course, none of this really means all that much for another reason that is best explained in another clip. I remember being in surgery. And at that moment, I felt love. I thought, I must have died on the operating table. The second thought, now here's my analytical science mind still kicking in. So wait a minute, if I died, what's all this? Because first of all, I don't believe in anything. Second of all, my parents told me that you're going to go to hell because you're an atheist now. So of course you've heard me pound this drum over and over again, but I'm going to keep pounding it because to me, This is where the AI conversation needs to go. This is where the sentience conversation needs to go. This is where the humanness conversation needs to go. The best evidence we have, the best scientific evidence we have 
supports this near-death experience, supports this idea that none of this is what we think it is. So this would, of course, put a very different spin on the whole conversation about AI, about what it means to be human. And in some respects, it would make this conversation that I'm having with you irrelevant. Why worry about the details? Why worry about if folks are running off and doing crazy stuff with AI and P. Diddy's running around doing satanic stuff and the human compromise stuff and the videotaping stuff and repeating Epstein? We don't know how many Epsteins there are out there. Who cares? It, it doesn't matter. It's all on the same level of playing the game that AI is attempting to play right now. I mean, yeah, sure, AI is going to be king of that domain, but maybe that's not the only domain. Here's another clip from a former Skeptico guest. And so they wheeled me in and, and Dr. Flan was the doctor's name and she squeezed my hand and that's the last thing I remember until I popped out of my body. The minute I popped out, I was kind of in the corner of the room looking down at the surgeons and looking down at my body. And when you're outside of body, you don't see with normal eyes. You kind of see with this 360 de degree vision and you can zoom in on something or you can see behind you, but it's not that important. You know, you're mainly looking at what you're looking at. But I remember the tops of the surgeon's heads and I remember their hands, and I remember that there was a song on the radio. There was actually an Elvis song on the radio. It was the Easy Listening Station. And so I was like, oh, I know this station. And so there was, you know, a lot of awareness of the room itself and of the surgeons. And then I thought, oh, I'm alive. I, I, I live beyond this body. And I was so excited. I wanted to tell my agnostic friends in that moment. I was like, oh, I could explain this to them. They will understand consciousness definitely goes on. It, it was a much longer <laughs> time period that it, talk, it took to actually communicate with them. But I thought that that moment was profound enough, just looking at my body, looking at the surgeons. I was happy. I, I mean, there is no word that describes that happiness. It was relief and absolute peace that we go on that i mean i was convinced in that first moment because my consciousness felt at ease like i always feel a little bit nervous in the body and i think most people do probably to some degree there's something some pain somewhere or some anxiety or something is going on in that space nothing there was no pain so we're going to wrap this up because that's the real point I wanted to make. I've been on several shows and I keep trying to work back to this point of AI is divine because AI reveals our divinity, reveals our moreness, reveals that we are really connected because AI don't have no NDE. So let me know your thoughts on this. If you're out there, if you're listening let me hear from you. Let me know where you think all this stuff is going. And in particular, how it relates to your spirituality, your spiritual journey, if we can put it in those terms. And of course, until next time, take care and bye for now. <laughs>